Andy got at from Leader Evaporator, and I'm here at uh, Westview Maple Works here in Grand Isle uh, with Bill Champagne. And he's going to give us a little tour of his sugar house today and um, some of the things he likes about the equipment, hopefully. <laughs> So where do you want to start, Randy? Um, well, let's start with uh, let's start with the arch. Okay. This is a front front fire oil fired arch. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. How many gallons of oil do you burn per hour? Do you remember? About four. About four Three gallons and of oil an hour. Yep. And it's a thirty by eight evaporator. That's correct. Yep. Um, you've got Revolution drop flue pans. <laughs> drop flue pans. That's correct, Randy. Yep. Um, with hoods, and everything exhaust out through into this cupola up here with the steam stacks. Um, automatic draw off makes life a little bit easier. It does, absolutely. We love the automatic draw. Yep. This unit's about 15 years old. Yep. 15 to 18 years old, yeah. Yep. And, look uh, at, it looks brand new. Yeah. Well, you take care of them. You know how that is, Randy. You do. I understand. You take care of it and clean it. It does well for you. Yep. Yes. Yep. We've added a few things since we bought it. We added the hood here. Yep. The front, and we keep the door open just so I can see what's going on. Yep. It's nice to see that little level of, of syrup in there. Yep. Of course, yep. you can see it here as well. You also have a steam away. Yeah, the steam away is wonderful. It makes a lot of hot water for us, and uh, we use the water here in the sugar house for cleanup. Yeah. About how much hot water do you get for Oh, geez, Randy. You know. So um, I, I did never calculated that. Probably ought to calculate it. Yeah. Probably got to be what 100 gallons. Oh yeah, 100, every yeah. Three four hours. Yes, it, like yes. That. It's a lot of hot water. Yeah, it's a lot of we hot water. We save some of it, but we let some go outside as well. Yep. Yeah. Nice for cleaning. It's, it's for great for cleaning. Yes. The auto draw is amazing. You just once you get it dialed in with a hydrometer, yep. get your temperature set, set the hyd set it there when you got to go, and, and you're all set for the evening. Yep. We do check it periodically through the evening because it can change yep. a point, half a point here or there. Oh yeah, I used to call it in, in our sugar operation. I used to call that my extra man. Oh yeah, you can because walk you away. Have, you have so many jobs going <laughs> on, and there's not enough of you around to do all the jobs. So that thing is kind of your insurance policy to make sure your that syrup is, doesn't get extra heavy on you. That is so true. You can actually walk away and do something else. Yep. You aren't babysitting every minute. Exactly. So once you draw it off there into this uh, uh, draw off tank that you got here made by us, um, it goes from here into your filter press. That's correct. Yep. And then put the filter press to the canning, the it, canner. To the canning tank over further here. And then we heat it from there and put in five gallon pails or jugs, whatever evening, whatever we need to do for that evening. Yep. Very nice. Very it's a nice setup, Randy. We've had very little issues with knock on wood over the years. I mean, yep. extremely reliable. Yep. Extremely. I have an extra syrup pan up overhead. To tell you the truth, I've never I'll probably used it three times. No kidding. Because we do clean it right because you right, clean right it right off. in place much exactly. easier, much yeah. quicker. Oh, it's just yep. as quick to clean it in place anyway. Oh, you absolutely. Can, you can drain it totally by shutting off your back pan. Yeah, we drain it and filter the syrup out, and next night put it back in. We're going again. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I noticed that you have a nice, uh, nice run of syrup here. Um, we did. We had a good year for you know, very, very nice run of syrup. There's, and this, this was your last. last it's the last boil there, Andy. This yeah. was the last boil. It's two days ago. Our last boil this year was April 6th. And your season started when? February 26th. Wow. Uh, well, we had it. That's we, a fairly long season. Yeah, but we, now. you know, the 26th we boiled for like a day. Yeah. Then we had four or five days off. And yeah. we started back in, not every day, but we had, what, 20 something boils. Yeah. That's yeah. about normal for us. Yeah, and here you, in had, you had a really good crop of syrup. I, I was just looked at doing the, I just did the numbers here with you a second ago, and you made 4.1 pounds per tap, which uh, for the kind of year that we had this year, you did very well. It was good in the valley, I think, here. We had that weather, the fluctuation of freeze and thaw. Yeah. Then we had those five or six days that got 70 degrees. I said we're done. Because over the years, I think I talked to you, yep. the, the peepers came out and then my yep. vernal pool back here. They did. And once those peepers come out, I say, well, we're done. Well, then it got cold for three or four days. The peepers went back into the where they go. And guess what? We started making sap again and yep. we boiled syrup. And I never happened, it's never happened in 25 yep. years. Yep, so different year for sure. So this is, is this your concentrate tank? That is, yes. Okay. Yep. 300 gallons. 300 gallon concentrate tank. That's what you feed the steam away with. We do. And with that full at 12%, Randy, we can boil off in three hours. Three hours. So that's we'll about do, 100 gallons an hour. Of, yeah, of concentrate, yes. We're doing about 14, 
15 gallons an hour in syrup depends on the concentration level. Yep, yep, for sure. We, this is your new bugger? It is. Um, and we absolutely love it. It's just, it's amazing. Yep. I went from that 600 um, spring spring tech, Randy. Yep. And uh, two years ago, and I had it for 12 years, and unfortunately she froze one season and we we had to get rid of it. But uh, yep. um, this is uh, yeah, fantastic. You, you test fired one of our we did. single membrane yep. uh, MVPs uh, the year before. We did. And uh, that worked out well for you, and you said you thought you wanted to order this one. So A little bit bigger, we want to increase the number of taps. So. Yeah. And this, we've been processing close to a thousand gallons an hour between 900 to a thousand at 12 to 14 percent. Wow. That is very, very good. You know, no complaints whatsoever. Of course, you clean, 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 you know. Yep. Well, the thing is, you, I mean, you bought a machine that's a little bigger than what you need. Correct. But it allows you to do the cleaning process. It does. When you really and need we, to. And we bought that big 1,500 gallon holding tank for the permeate, which Sean uh, suggested. Yep. And we did that. So I think, the, I think it makes a big difference. Yep. Yeah, it does. Yeah, very happy with it. Yeah, having that extra permeate, as long as you don't let it freeze. <laughs> It freezes easy. <laughs> the permeate does. Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, there's nothing in it. There's no okay. minerals and no nothing. So you're, you know, you're saving all the minerals and keeping those to boil. Um, that permeate water is kind of dead water. It will freeze very quickly. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd recommend this to any size, you know, yeah. operational size. I think up to five thousand taps. You said. Yep. That's about what it's it's rated for. Okay. Well, this this. Uh, MVP 1200. Sap comes in from his storage tank down here, comes through this strainer, uh, which takes out any of the big stuff or, or the slimy stuff toward the end of the season. Um, and then it's fed into this uh, the feed pump. The feed pump picks up the sap and pushes it through these pre-filters on the front, these cartridges. Um, from the cartridges, it goes to the pressure pump. And then the, from, the, from the pressure pump, pump pushes the sap through the membranes under pressure and Bill you run what around 300 psi maybe yes yeah right around three there. to 320 somewhere mm -hmm. in there yep um, it'll build three to 320 or so psi maybe a little more than that I think I've seen some of them go as high as 380 um, once it goes through the membranes the uh, the membrane is tight enough so that the, the water is able to go through it but the concentrate or the, the the sugar stays in the center and comes out as a concentrate to boil in your evaporator um, very very simple process it's basically a high pressure filtering um, these membranes, these are your flow meters on the top of the membranes that tells you what you're permeating, what your uh, flow rate of, of uh, uh, water coming out is um, out of each one of the membranes. Um, on the front, you've got your two samples. I mean, this is your concentrate sample, so you can check it to see what your concentrate level is. And then this is your permeate, so you can actually check your permeate so to make sure that you don't have uh, any sugar that's being passed into the permeate water. It's very, very important to, uh, to clean the RO, but the first step after you're done concentrating that you need to do is you do a desugaring. <laughs> yeah. um, because, and, and that didn't used to get done in the, with the older ROs, and there was a lot of syrup that would go out on the ground from the membranes because they were not desugaring. And what you do is you basically are concentrating your permeate water when you do that. You, you, you go from your sap tank to your permeate tank and feed it permeate and, and concentrate your permeate. And that flushes all of the sweet that's in your membranes, your concentrate, out of there. Um, and just keep testing it until it gets down below 1%. And then you would just rinse the machine at that point and then set it up for a soap wash. And you would go through the soap wash process and, and what that does is it circulates a soap solution through the membranes. Um, and it'll take you probably 30 to 45 minutes to do so. Um, and it'll come up to two, this one set at 217? That's uh, 117. Or 117, excuse That's me. correct, yep. Yeah, set at 117. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> And uh, it'll shut off automatically at 117 degrees. And then you would turn your valves to the rinse cycle and rinse the soap out. Um, and 
And at that point, you would flow check your membranes and see how, make sure you haven't lost any ground at all with your membranes. If you did, then you would repeat the process, do it again, um, until your membranes are back up to where you started. And once you're done that, you're ready to concentrate the next coil. This is a three horsepower um, air blow flood system with a cooler. Uh, what the cooler does is it gives you a higher vacuum. They can run up to 28 inches of vacuum. Um, and, and the way this is set up, it has its own moisture trap built right onto the, onto the same frame. So your vacuum is applied on the moisture trap and it's applied up through here, travels over to your vacuum releaser. Um, which the vacuum releaser transfers the vacuum into the sugar woods. Um, Bill has this set up here uh, so it dumps into a free falling tank and then he has a sump pump that pumps the sap back up and into his storage tank. Um, very good setup. Now all your taps, Bill, aren't right here. You've got 1,100 here? Yeah, it's 11 on a vacuum. Yeah. Then we got another 126 down on gravity here on my property, another 240 in North Hero. Yep. Yeah. 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 Very nice. Very we just nice. truck some of it here and put it through the pump here and, yep. and through the uh, filter and then into the share house. Yep. Yeah. And he's got multiple lines coming in too. Um, so he can, if he's got leaks in his woods, he can figure out which section of the woods it is. Uh, by turning the valves open or closed. We ran 26 pounds this this uh, season. That's They're not, always chasing leaks out with the squirrels. Oh yeah, how that is. it is. That's, that's 25, not, 26 pounds for the season. That's, that's pretty darn good though. And when we'd lose a tap or something would separate, you'd go up, you'd probably lose a couple pounds of, so you know if you went from 25 to 23, you gotta go in the woods. Yeah, absolutely. And on a, a nice calm day, you could actually hear, you, you guys, you know. You not me. The, I have to see it. <laughs> I can see the leaks. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. The reason why I went with Leader Equipment is a couple of good reasons, actually. The first is the quality of the, of the product that they make. It's amazing. But the main reason to me is a service behind the equipment. This guy here, Randy, you know, I was I was an amateur when I started and I'd probably call him every day when I got the new equipment. It's a little scared to do something wrong or burn something up or break something. But number one, Leader Evaporator has the best service by far and the best, some of the best equipment. I've no doubt about it in my mind. We really appreciate that, Bill. Well, we appreciate the service and the kind words and, and yep. uh, oh, you know, the follow up. You know I'm always there if you ever, <laughs> if you ever have a question. It's, it's amazing, it really is. Yep. I appreciate all the fantastic job. Thank you for allowing us in your sugar house. Today. You're very welcome, it was pleasurable. Okay.